What's cracking female sheep and root vegetables? Brett here today and for this video we're going to be talking about the multi-item item sorter. Uh, you see here behind me is Tango Tech's design which is uh, I think what most people would go with and for this uh, for those who don't know this is a uh, storage system which you can program your chest by putting one of each item in each slot and then you just when you come in to your base you just dump everything in the input chest and it will sort through and if a, say a grass block comes through it'll come in here and if anything that's anything isn't reserved it'll come out through the through the output um, so what's the first thing that you think when you see this circuit uh, is it holy crap that's complicated because that's what I thought when I was building this um, so my my mission today is to make something that you don't have to reference a video 20 times to build uh, something that's a little bit simpler um, and just one, a disclaimer I did have to sacrifice the silent dropper vader in order to make this a uh, lot, lot more compact and a lot simpler to build um, you see here I went through a bunch of iterations trying to come up with something that was a little easier to build and you can see I got angry and blew them up when they didn't work. Uh, I came up with this before I went to a tutorial world to try and to uh, make a video on it and actually came up with something even easier than this one um, and more dense too. So let's, uh, let's go check it out uh, and here we have a little preview of things to come. I've, I've come up with some mini games that I'll be putting videos out in the future so stay tuned for that. <coughs> Alright, this is my proof of concept that I've come up with. Uh, it works just the same way. You can uh, program your chest just as in Tango Text Design and then chuck things into your input chest and it will sort them out. And it, it all runs on this simple little uh, five clock down here. And if you come around the back, it's uh, a lot simpler and a lot more compact. Um, I believe Tango's design was four by nine. Mine is, it's technically one and a half wide because this slice here is shared by this tower chest and this tower chest. Uh, and it's only six, six deep, so it's a lot more, a lot smaller. And there's, uh, I believe, one less block down below everything. Um, so here's my grand design. You can, uh, you can expand this as big as you want. I believe you can do 12 chest highs, as high as the redstone signal will go, and you can make it 18 columns of chests long. Um, I wouldn't re recommend going that big because, first of all, that's 200 and what 16 chests. That's way too many chests. No one needs that many, and also that would probably lag the crap out of your game. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but it all it all works um, pretty nice. Uh, gets the job done, and I've also come up with a timer circuit, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about how it works later. That will shut off the clock once everything is sorted. Okay, so let's get back in, let's get into uh, how to build this. I've got my cheat sheet here. Um, yellow represents chests, black is hoppers, gray is droppers, and red is our circuitry. And then down here, the green is where the timing circuit will go. Uh, let's get our chests in first. I will be doing four towers, six high for this tutorial, but like I said, you can build it as big as you want up to uh, 12 by 18. And then we'll need uh, hoppers pointed into all of them. All right. <clears throat> and then at the top you need an extra hopper that's pointed into nothing. I don't really understand why, but uh, it just makes the timing work out. And next are dropper vaders. They will be starting two blocks below the chests. There. Oops. It's not two blocks below, come on. Okay. 
up, up, up. Oh, and that last hopper, and the last dropper at the top will be pointed forward. Like that. Um, when you have two chests next to each other, this first hopper here is going to be pointed this direction, and the rest will be pointed up. Oops. ones pointed forward. And the last one pointed forward. Okay, and then we'll connect our towers together. <coughs> uh, this this line will come down and then go into him like that. This one will come down and go into that one, like that. This this one is the same as that one, so it will go like that. And I guess we don't need that one. And then this here will be our output. So we can just have something like that. Uh, okay. Next we'll set up our circuitry. So pointing into this second layer of droppers, we'll need the line of repeaters. Like right there. So repeaters on top of all those. Oops. And we'll repeat we'll do that every two layers. And we don't need that last one. Did I make seven? No, okay. <laughs> uh, repeater is on e all these slabs. And then a line of slabs behind them. With dust on top of all that. Okay, and next we'll put in <coughs> solid blocks in between the droppers um, and the same same level that all these slabs are at. do it. Next we need uh, a way for the redstone signal to get up the tower. Uh, like that and that. Did I screw up? Yeah, these two are in the wrong spot. <laughs> okay, there and there. Okay, and dust on the top of each of those. Just to connect the layers together. Alright, and then last we need torches on all these solid blocks. We can get rid of these slabs that I put in. They're, they were just temporary. Alright. And that's it all hooked up. Let's now connect our clock to it. Um, actually, this needs to be a solid block, and that needs to be a solid block. <laughs> oh, I screwed up here. Yeah. These two hoppers are wrong. They go into there. Okay. That looks good. Okay. Now we'll have two slabs coming out of these solid blocks. Uh, repeater, oops, pointed into them. And a piece of dust behind them. Um, now depending on how tall you make this, you don't need this every third block. Um, but you do, so you can just get rid of the repeater, but you do need a line of dust here because of some kind of weird quasi-connectivity issue. Um, which I don't fully understand, but 
the way that this repeater is powering this dropper, this one decides to not work sometimes unless you give it an update next to it. So that's what this dust is doing, even though it's not really connected to anything. Um, <clears throat> just a heads up for you there. All right, so let's build the clock that makes this run. Oops. So we'll go down a block for that. One slab there, and a little two by two here. Solid block up there. Torch on that side, a repeater on full delay. Dust, 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 and then dust. And that's the most basic way to do this. Um, if the noise bugs you, you can always put a redstone signal into this block to stop it. Um, yeah, and you could stop now, and yeah, you're, you could be done. Or if you don't want to worry about like, oh, is is there still items going through? Can I turn this off yet? We, uh, you can go ahead and build the timing circuit that I came up with. So we actually don't need that. What you're going to need for this circuit is a dropper Oops. pointed into that dropper vader right there. And so let's go over and talk about how this works. So that's the dropper I just placed. We're going to be taking a signal out of it with this comparator. Um, so when, when you first put items in, it will turn this comparator on which will power this block, which will um, move this block of redstone, which uh, redstone is keeping the ethyl clock from going while nothing's happening. Um, when the comparator is on, it keeps this powered also, so the ethyl clock still doesn't start until this empties out, um, which uh, pulls the block back up, but because pistons take a little bit longer to fire, there's a little bit of gap where this dust is off, which allows the ether clock to start. Um, there's a very specific number of items in here, which uh, I'll put up a spreadsheet that I made, which you can reference. Um, it's based on how big you build this, how many items you need in there. <coughs> um, and then I'm, I've got a subtract mode comparator here, and then in here I just have enough to get uh, signal strength that's one less than what you would get out of all the items in this side. Uh, so here, uh, when the comparator turns on, that observer you saw right there comes over here. It uh, pushes this block down, which gets this clock started. And then once the comparator turns off again, it pulls it back up, reconnecting everything. But because I've got this one subtracting the signal, it, <clears throat> you won't get a signal going through that block until the ether clock is done, which will then turn the clock off. Um, and it's timed out so that it won't turn off until an item that you put in the input chest has enough time to go through everything and then end up in the output chest. So let's, uh, I'm sorry if that was a little confusing. <laughs> let's talk about how to build it. So this is that dropper I just put in. We'll put a solid block in front of it. And a comparator pointed out. Let me get what I need. Comparator, solid block in front of him. Sticky piston pointed down. Right, yeah, that's right. <coughs> Redstone block on, on him. Solid block right there, dust on it, and then this is where the ether clock starts. Sticky piston, block of redstone, and we can do our two hoppers that are, that are pointed into each other. Comparators coming out of them. in front of that one with dust on top and then we'll need another comparator coming out of that oh and a sticky piston right here 
this comparator needs to be in subtract mode, just right click it, make sure that light turns on. Two slabs there, dust, and a comparator, and just our reference hopper there. A solid block there with, oops, with the sticky piston grabbing it. And then a repeater coming out of this one. There. Another solid block with a torch on that side. A little two by two of slabs here. Repeater. Dust, dust, dust. Oh, and this repeater is on full delay. And then we'll go a line of slabs, like so, just up to this last uh, input, you know, <laughs> line of dust on them, like that, and uh, let's just uh, throw some items in to make sure that it stops. And last but not least, we'll need the observer to connect to that piston. So we'll put an observer there, and then in the line of slabs, right there, and then a solid block right there. And then all last we need is dust on top of this. Oh hey, don't connect. <laughs> Let's just put a solid block there and make sure that doesn't connect. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I will include a world download down in the description and I'll put that uh, spreadsheet in there so you guys can reference it. And I hope you enjoy. Bye bye!